The United States government claims that Saddam Hussein is to blame for the crisis. What is the real cause of the suffering? The sanctions. They are an extension of the 1991 United States war against Iraq. The goal was to cripple Iraq's infrastructure and make civilian life unsustainable. We demonstrated the capacity of technology to cripple a country without ever setting foot on it in the Persian Gulf. It's important to recognize that because it goes hand in hand with the sanctions. When we merely say that we flew 110,000 aerial sorties in 42 days, one every 30 seconds on the average, 24 hours a day, we ignore what we really did. As officials said the death toll was now 288 with many more to come. The trucks kept filling up and driving away, past waiting relatives who knew they might never be able to identify the bodies of their loved ones. The community of Amaria filled one of the first of many funerals with gunfire in sign of grief and fury, and with angry words aimed through foreign journalists. My mother, she's gone, shouted this young man. This woman asked, could not all your modern technology tell you that there were children and women here? Bill Blakemore, ABC News, in the Amaria district of Baghdad. We destroyed every silo for grain or anything else storing food in the whole country. We destroyed all the storage and processing of food plants throughout the country. Even dates, the world's biggest exporter of dates famous processing and packaging plants in Baghdad, deliberately destroyed. We didn't want them to be able to feed themselves for a long, long time. We're all aware of the famous little powdered milk plant. The, the United States government says that in this factory here, you are making chemical weapons. Is that true? No, that's not true. They are lie because this is milk for children. Uh -huh. It's powder, milk of children. Uh -huh. Nothing else was made, only this in the factory? Yes, and you can see in yourself. With the only factory in the Middle East to produce powdered milk, they were producing about 17% of their powdered milk requirements. We destroyed that, cut off all the milk, and malnutrition of the mothers immediately jeopardized all of the infants. 70% of the pregnant women, even today in Iraq, suffer anemia. The death rate for children has soared compared to 1989, the last year before sanctions. One of the biggest causes of death in Iraqi children today is diarrhea and dysentery due to the untreated drinking water. Iraq's water purification plants were heavily bombed in the war, and many that were repaired have broken down. The United Nations bans the import of spare parts and chlorine into Iraq to purify water. We saw the effects of this policy in the hospitals. This is the second attack for me of acute bloody diarrhea, amoebic dysentery. Most of them are due to contamination of water is malnourished, anemic, underweight with a developmental delay. Diarrhea and vomiting. Do you have tap water there? No. You can see the conditions of these children it shouldn't, shouldn't happen anywhere, and it's caused by the sanctions that the United States government insists upon. The U.S. military used 800 tons of depleted uranium weapons in the war, causing a rise in cancers among the population. Why does the United States government spend $50 billion a year to patrol the Persian Gulf and keep Iraq locked down? Please raise their hand. Why does it pressure the Security Council to maintain the total blockade? We need to look back on the recent history of Iraq. For many years, U.S., British, and French oil companies 
owned 95% of Iraq's oil while they maintained a puppet monarchy in power. The people lived lives of extreme poverty. When the Iraqi people carried out a revolution in 1958 against King Faisal II, U.S.